Hi, I'm Jawad. Hi, my name's Tom. And today I'm going to be talking about how I would invest £50,000. Today I will be talking about how I would invest £50,000 in property. So my strategy is broken down into two sections really. Properties that I've got for cash flow, so that generate a decent rental return. And then properties I've got uh, on the other side of the spectrum really for a pension. So I focus primarily with those on capital growth. My strategy would be um, long-term financial freedom to be honest um, and also to hand something over to my, um, to my kids. So I'd be looking for something that would appreciate uh, capital growth uh, rather than how much rental I'll be getting a month. So the main reason I split my strategy in half is because I've kind of got a medium goal and a long-term goal. So for this element of the strategy, I'm focusing a little bit more on cash flow. So I'm looking for more affordable areas in and around primarily Leeds and Sheffield because they're great cities in their own right. But because I can get a really good rate of return in those areas and I can pick up a property for quite cheap in some areas, they'll rent really, really well. And as a result of them being affordable, I get a really good element of return. So my target location for this price point would be Sheffield. The reason why I chose this uh, area is that I feel that it has a lot to offer um, and the price of the land at the moment is still quite cheap. If you move towards the city centre, um, you are, your prices are rising and with the current market at the moment, again, everything has gone sky high. You find that Sheffield has good transport links, it has a great university um, and also lots of uh, potential growth um, for redevelopment, um, new developments being built at the moment, um, so plenty of room for capital growth. So for the cash flow side of things, my sort of price range tends to be between 90,000 to maximum 140,000 pounds, which might be surprising for some of you, depending on where you live, that you can pick up a property for that amount. But the reason I focus for that area is you tend to find that you get the best returns from those. What sort of properties will I be looking at? Well, primarily there'll be two bedroom, maybe three bedroom terraced houses because again, the returns are higher, there's no service charge on those, there's no ground rent. So it's basic, easy, uh, predictable rent. So target price point would be um, definitely under 100K, uh, around the £70,000 mark. I think with this, I would definitely um, get a mortgage um, to fund the property. Um, I'd have some money left over to be able to reno the property, which I'd, I don't think I would be able to find um, a property in a, a reasonable state where someone could just move straight in. So those funds would allow me to do some DIY work as much as I could, but also call in some tradesmen. Um, in terms of the rental side of things, um, hopefully uh, achieve as, as much rent as possible, but again, don't want the property to be sat there for a long uh, period of time, so get someone in as quickly as possible. Now, the common mistake that people make is they look at the value of the property, divide it by four and think, well, I only need a 25% deposit, which is common for buy to let but they forget to factor in things like stamp duty, legal costs, mortgage costs, and all of those things. So a better way of looking at it, or a more conservative way, this is what I do, I look at the property's value and I divide it by three, and I think that's how much I'm gonna need. So I could go up to about that 140K property that I talked about with my 50K. That would allow me to have the deposit, all of my fees, and a little bit left over, because it's always good to have a buffer just in case you've got a void period or some unforeseen expense comes your way. I don't think I'll be able to get um, a grand property uh, for the price point, um, and again, the current market is uh, quite mental, but um, I would say a two bed terrace, one bed terrace, um, even an apartment in, in um, Sheffield uh, would, would suit my price point well. So after doing a bit of market research, uh, I think the type of property that I would be going for would bring in around five to 600 pounds per calendar month, uh, which would roughly be around a six to 7% yield. This is more of a, a capital growth um, strategy uh, that I would pursue. I think in the long term, I would be able to take a lot more out of the property when I come to sell um, in a good number of years. I think I've been really, really clear on my goals over the last year or two. I've really honed in on them. Beforehand, I was really focused on capital appreciation. So I've got some property that's doing really well from that standpoint. But now it's more about focusing on the cash flow. So over the last year or two, I've really honed in on specific areas, run the numbers, spent a lot of time researching. And as a result, I'm starting to get there from that point of view. I'm not quite where I want to be yet 
but all that research is paying off and it's really starting to impact uh, what I want to be at the moment in terms of my investment goal. I think personal um, circumstances um, and goals would be to be financially free later on in life um, so I'm quite young at the moment and I'm think, still thinking about my pension um, so I would like to um, release properties later on, have some money to live off but also have other properties so that I can hand them down to my, um, my children um, and so that they can live a good life as well. So that's what I would do with 50k, I would invest in a hands-off buy-to-let that gives me a good return on investment. But that doesn't mean that that's the right thing for you. It's very important to get clear on your goals, just like I've done, so that the next property that you buy is going to be ideal and get you to where you want to be. If you're not 100% clear on that, I would absolutely recommend having a look at the goal setting course that we've got here at Property Hub and look into all the different strategies that we talk about because just because I'm doing a hands-off buy-to-let strategy, doesn't mean that it will be the right strategy for you. So this is exactly how I would invest my 50k, uh, just my opinion and views on, um, on things. Um, let us know how you would invest your 50k. And please consider subscribing to the channel.